Everyone, welcome to Dialogue at Young Ren in Beijing. China is attracting criticism from musicians, artists, and authors from around the world. They are all concerned about China's corporate laws, which they claim do not give them enough protection from companies or individuals who copy their work. The Chinese authorities have come up with new copyright proposals, but these have been met with more protests. So, why is copyright proving such a big problem in China, and how important is it for China's image, especially in the creative world? To discuss these issues, we are happy to be joined in the studio by Mr. Jean-Michel Jarre, President of International Confederation of Authors and Composers Societies. Who is better known as the godfather of、uh, world electronic、uh, music, Mr. Olivier Hendewinko, Director General of International Confederation of Authors and Composers Societies, and Madame Yuli, CEO with One Stop China Limited. But before we get started, let's look at this. In the last century, when he saw his books being published in China without his authorization, the Nobel laureate Garcia Marquez said he would never allow any of his books to be printed in China, even 150 years after his death. Over the decades, regulations have improved. China passed its copyright law in 1990 and entered the Universal Copyright Convention two years later. In 2011, the first authorized version of Marquez's acclaimed novel *100 Years of Solitude* was finally published in China. People's awareness of copyright is also improving. According to the National Copyright Administration of China, a total of about 850,000 copyrights were registered in 2013, up about 23% compared with the number in 2012. A large part of those registered are music copyrights. The Music Copyright Society of China said its licensing revenue in 2013 had topped an historic high of 112 million yuan. However, pirating is still common. The internet has provided new and easier opportunities for piracy. The number of pirate websites is huge, and the market share they've grabbed is eight to ten times bigger than ours.、And、that's a great impact for those websites like us who observe the copyright laws. Last year, China's largest search engine, Baidu, and Shenzhen-based technology firm QVOD were fined 250,000 yuan each by the National Copyright Administration of China for video copyright violation, making it one of the major copyright infringement cases of 2013. As cultural exchanges widen and deepen, China is promoting closer cooperation with the international community in the field of copyright protection. Last month, CISAC. Announced it was relocating its Asia Pacific headquarters from Singapore to Beijing, making it the first regional headquarters of an international intelligence property organization in China. Welcome to Dialogue.、Uh, your predecessor,、uh, Mr. Robin Jit, criticized China for copyright law violations. Now, Cizak decides to relocate its headquarters from Singapore to Beijing. What does that mean for you? First of all, it's a, it's a good sign. As a, as a friend of China for for a long time, because I've, I've been I have the privilege to have been the, the first Western musician to play China in 1981, just after Mao Zedong's time. So I I know this country, and I think it's a, it's a big step ahead to have the Cizak、uh, regional office、uh, being in Beijing for all the Asia Pacific, obviously for for China. I think you see, China is a young country and very ancient country as well, and I think we have a lot to share, a lot to learn from each other, and especially in terms of、uh, authors' rights. You know, if I'm here today in front of you as a musician, not on, not as president of CISAC, but as a musician, it's because I have been protected by authors' rights societies,、uh, having received a fair remuneration from my work, as you would have. From CCTV, from your work, it's, this, it's the way it works in, in in any kind of countries, and it's where China has to probably learn from other countries, especially in,、uh, in European countries. And、uh, we have, and I'm here also to share with、uh, Chinese artists and to、uh, give back and to、uh, maybe give、uh, give some uh, uh, share my experience as a worldwide、uh, artist. Uh, Olivier, uh, obviously China is still at the primary stage of its、uh, economic and social develop,、uh, 
uh, despite the fact that China is fast becoming the second biggest economy. However, given the criticism from his predecessor, Mr. Robin Jib, uh, do you think China should be encouraged to have a dialogue with the people like you, or we should be punished immediately? Since uh, Robin Gibbs, uh, punishing is really uh, the last resort, if I may, but uh, since uh, Robin Gibbs' uh, um, appreciation of the situation, at that time things have evolved in China, and things in China evolve always very rapidly. So if we today are in China, if we today, uh, with President Jean-Michel Jarre, are here to inaugurate an office, the uh, CISAC Asia Pacific office, it is because the environment has evolved in such a manner that today we are in a constructive and developing fast pace copyright law change towards a better environment for creators, Chinese creators, in all areas of activity. Music, audiovisual, fine arts, etc., etc. And these copyright law changes and this change of attitude from the Chinese authorities is more than welcome for several reasons. The first one is that a greater respect, as Jean-Michel just said, for the creators and their work means a better remuneration for their works, means that they can work more, means that they contribute to the economy. Second, if China shows leadership throughout the region, the current trend that sees the Asia-Pacific region be 20% more or less, of the overall CISAC revenue, will boom. So China has definitely a leadership role to play, and we CISAC are very happy that it took the bull by the horn. Madam Yuli, do you think China is ready to exercise regional leadership? Absolutely. Um, I think if um, um, China has been um, played such important um, uh, roles in the uh, uh, global economy, why cannot uh, we play the important role for the um, thriving uh, cultural environment? And I think, you know, China should play that role. That's a big question. Now, uh, creative industries uh, will be the next stage of China's economic development. In that case, how important is it to protect the creation of uh, artists, uh, composers, authors, so on and so forth? You know, it, it works both ways. I mean, everybody can understand that in every family, you have a son, a daughter, a sister, a brother, one dreaming to become a photographer, a filmmaker, a writer, a, 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 a musician. And uh, they, if we don't organize ourselves, uh, partly in front of the new media and in technology, these kids, these children, will, uh, will need to have a job on the side. And they couldn't dedicate their life full-time to their dream and to their that could become their main activity, music, photography, cinema, or the, it's the reason why that copyrights and author rights is the, the key for the future of culture. And it's the key, but especially in, a, in such a country as China, which is such a big country, which has such a big past and, and such a big future also in terms of painting, cinema, music. We have to join forces. It's not only a Chinese problem, a French problem, an American problem. It's a global, uh, a global answer we have to all together to invent and to create. Finding the right means and the right system, and the right system is the, the one Olivier was talking about, to have collective management societies. It means that these, com these, these societies are belonging to us as artists. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, uh, uh, Jacques. What are the uh, definitions for, for example, copyright and collective mm. management? We first of all have the copyright, which I believe is the copyright of the Europeans. You created the phrase, and you have practiced the law for many years. Now, for some of the Chinese uh, creators, they love their arts, but they don't have a clear idea about how important it is to protect their rights. Yes, copyright doesn't mean right to copy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to copy the right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, your question is, is hugely important, and, and Jean-Michel has already uh, uh, given some of the uh, some of the answers uh, that, are, that are necessary to understand copyright. But copyright, in its simplest version, what is it? It's a right. It's a right for what? Jean-Michel creates something. Why is Jean-Michel creating something, and I'm not? Because he's a creator. As a creator, he's going to create something unique. Whatever it is, it's unique. 
And this unique thing might, he hopes for, might be sold, might become a success. He deserves his unique creation to be protected. He needs to have the property rights over this creation. But he also needs to have the remuneration rights. This is copyright. And what is collective management? It's basically the tool that makes sure that wherever Jean-Michel Jarre's music is being performed, there is somebody that licenses it, there is somebody that collects it, and there is somebody that redistributes it to him. People need to bear in mind one very important thing. Do, do, do you know what the difference is between Jean-Michel Jarre and me, besides the hairstyle? Yes, obviously. <laughs> That's a big difference. There is another one. <laughs> and, and I certainly appreciate that. But besides this, there is another difference. He's a genius. I'm not. He's a creator. Is the third difference. I'm an employee. I get a salary. In, day in, day out, that I deliver, that I deliver well, or that I deliver so-so, I get a salary. I can go on vacation. He does not. He does not. If he does not have a system that protects him, if he does not have a collective management society that looks after his well-being, who will do it? Nobody. And then he cannot create, and we cannot enjoy his music. From now on, after relocating the original office of uh, CSAC from Singapore to Beijing, I hope you will have uh, more sound sleep instead of sleepless nights. Nice. But let me uh, uh, cross over to Madame Yuli. Baidu is accused of uh, violating the copyrights of uh, Yuku, Tudo, uh, Tangsen, uh, Sohu video. Now, what have you done to protect the rights of these players? Well, um, this is a very big case in the industry, and um, although that you know um, there is a, a fund they have to be paid, um, but uh, the this, the settlement is actually insignificant. But what is actually more important is the state uh, is making this stand, and it's signalling to the industry as well as to the general public the copyright matters. If you do not respect the copyrights and there is a consequences. Was it a, a smooth negotiation process with Baidu about the serious consequences of their infringement? Surely, you know, because you know, this is about their reputation, this is about their credibility. What's and the role of the uh, uh, National Administration of Copyrights, uh, I mean the, the, the National Copyrights Administration of China? Uh, what's the official role of that organization in facilitating this uh, uh, process. I mean, that's one issue. The other one is, uh, do you think this is wrong? Because it should be the, uh, the court, uh, the judiciary, that should have stepped in, instead of having the, uh, impl the uh, uh, in intervention from the uh, State Department, I mean, the, the government. Mm, I think, you know, the, the legal system here in China is probably very different from the, those ones in the uh, Western country. Uh, I don't um, believe that, uh, you know, um, if it's only the, the ju uh, judicial, um, it, it works, you know, but not administrative works. So I think maybe the combination of the uh, ju judicial and also the administration could be the way for China. What do you think of this idea, the brainchild of combining the government's role with the judiciary in implementing the law of the copyright protection? Yes, I mean, all those, all those um, uh, ideas and concepts are positive. You know, which is very important that ch every Chinese people should understand, like everybody else in every other country, the greed for free content should not start, should not starve creativity. Mm -hmm. What we should understand is Facing new technology and new media, uh, we, are, we, are, we have to think all together about the fact that if you take a smartphone, okay, the smart part is us, because if you get rid from your smartphone, movies, images, sounds, dra uh, videos, uh, 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 journalism, news, you just have a simple phone of $50 or $100. The other part is us, is all of us, is you also. It's all of us. And this is something that deserves thought because it's okay that music or graphics or, or your, what you, your work would be free on the Internet as long as there is a fair remuneration, remuneration that is uh, organized uh, 
trough on top. And this is where uh, collective uh, management societies can be efficient and can help you, can help me, can help any creators all over the world, whatever it is, Chinese, Eskimo, Brazilian, French or American. Uh, <clears throat> now, Mr. Jacques, you are an old friend of China. In fact, you held five concerts in Beijing and in, in Shanghai, of course, uh, in 1981, the first time a popular musician from the West performed in China following the Cultural Revolution. Tell me, uh, for the very first concert in Beijing, uh, half of the uh, uh, spe spectators left in the middle of the concert because they were afraid that the bus would stop. Uh, they would not be carried home. So, uh, was it a very embarrassing moment for you? And I raised this question in the context of uh, development of China, step by step. Now, with the enormous popularity of people like you, yet uh, you didn't receive as much warm welcome as you should have in Europe. Now, were you embarrassed? With this in your mind, as part of the bitter memory concerning your first performance in China, the maiden voyage here, now, why didn't you lose patience? Why did you uh, still come to China and you came with a very kind of message with, uh, for the Chinese? Look, I'm here again. I want to protect my rights and I also want to protect the rights of the Chinese uh, creators. You know, First of all, to answer to the first question, the second night, I started earlier, so nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was point number one. It was technical solution. Not a cultural so, solution. That, exactly. You know, and, it, and, and it was easy. And I, I must say that I've been so uh, uh, amazed by the war, very warm wel welcome I've got from the Chinese audience that I couldn't... I couldn't say that I was frustrated. But the Chinese was uh, were very reluctant to give applause. It's part of the culture. They were That's not right. as noisy as the Western uh, spectators. That's right. But concert. you know, it's, uh, it's also something else that I learned from your country. It's actually, you know, uh, you have to deal with time in a totally different way in China. It's a long story, and you have to, to be patient. But if you are patient, you are, you, you are rewarded. Because then a very true and deep friendship can, uh, can, uh, can grow, which is not necessarily the case in the Western world, where, where everything, where, where you have the tendency to zap a lot, and, and, and kind, this kind of emotional zapping sometimes in, in Europe or in the West is something that uh, is not existing in China, where when you, are, when you establish a friendship, as, as I said, it's something that lasts, and I, I learned that, and I learned a lot from China. I've been, it, it has been a constant source of inspiration for me as an artist and also as today for trying to, to defend uh, rights and, and sharing also these, all these problems we are talking about uh, today uh, with my, Chinese, my fellow Chinese artists. I've, uh, uh, I've, I've been here a, a lot and I played even 10 years ago in Forbidden City in Tiananmen Square involving Chinese artists. I mean, the old, the old thing with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, when you are an artist is also the idea of sharing. Sharing with the audience, but sharing also with the other artists. And if I accepted this uh, uh, task of being president of CISAC, it's also for sharing my experience with the Chinese audience, but with Chinese artists, because again, the idea of the, 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 the problem of rights for, for arts is not only for artists, it's also for every family, because in every family, maybe you will have the, the, the next Beatles, the next, uh, uh, the next uh, uh, Zhang Zimou, or the, le the, the next uh, Beethoven, you know. And this is what we have, to, uh, we have to think about, because otherwise, in 10 years from now, we'll have, we'll have no more that kind of scale of big artists if we don't help the young kids to get... In the, for the future, a fair remuneration for their artistic work. Thank you very much. You have raised a very good suggestion about uh, primary education for kids on the importance of copyright protection. We'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back, sir. Olivia, you have been silent for a long time. Uh, what do you think of the, uh, the gap uh, between your first visit to China and what what's happening now, today, in terms of... Uh, public awareness about defending their rights. The notion of copyright is still a new notion in China. We have to admit this and we have to work with this parameter in mind. 
But as Jean-Michel said, the notion of time is something that is very important in China. And I would like to go back to something that Amu said. It's, it's very important as well to realize that now is the right time and time will help us develop the notion of copyright, the proper copyright laws in this country. She mentioned the NCAC, the copyright department, that supervises actually collective management societies in China. And she mentioned the judiciary. And the fact that these two work together on a case to me is good news and not bad news. It means that from the highest levels of the government there is, an, there is a will, there is an appetite to get copyright and to get copyright through the heads of the users, the creators and the, the, the consumers' communities. Now, if it is a new notion, then CISAC has a role to play and that is why we opened an office here. We want to train, we want to bring our internal, um, international expertise, and we want to learn, because each country has its culture, and we want to respect this. Let me give you some examples. And maybe it's an announcement I will make one of these days on one of the CCTV shows. In other countries, we succeeded in creating copyright days. What does it mean? In some African countries, Eastern European countries, we now have copyright days, meaning to say, in each school, each teacher spends an hour explaining copyright. We give the background documents because you don't speak the same language with a teenager than with somebody who is, uh, who is younger, etc., etc. But there is a way to educate those that will live fully in a digital world. And as Jean-Michel said, people are willing to pay once they understand why they pay. Mm -hmm. And why do they pay? for creators to be able to create. It's as simple as that. And when I say this to people, they usually shift and come towards copyright. Even the users who are usually reluctant to pay. Then it's a negotiation on tariff, and Madame Mu, myself, are specialists in this. Can I one word re resume what Olivier just said? Education. Mm -hmm. Three words. Education, education, and education. education. Well, consumers uh, need to pay for the good service that they offer. Now, Madame Yu, what do you want to say? Well, I think, you know, in China, um, people talk about the Chinese consumers has been having a um, free lunch in the past decades. And this is a, just a China's uh, uh, situation, but it's actually not. It's a global uh, problem. Um, but uh, one side of that we are uh, working on educating the, uh, um, the, the uh, uh, consumers and you know they need to respect the uh, copyrights but this is a, a long-term uh, goal this is to take time and a great effort but on the other hand the industry actually and um, working you know uh, to create some uh, solutions um, uh, for example my company one stop china we're in the part of that uh, uh, the process what we're doing is we're working with uh, china china telecom or these uh, telecommunication companies like uh, china mobile and china telecom we're also working with the uh, uh, digital music service program providers like Tencent's QQ Music and Baidu and also, you know, uh, Kugo Kuo and Domi Xiaomi, you know, many others. And we're creating solutions and we're making a, a offer a service which is um, uh, the consumer willing to pay for. Why the uh, National Copyrights Administration of China finally agreed to uh, accept the relocation of the regional office of CISAC? Well, obviously, they want to show the support, you know, and to the organizations like CSAC and to show that, you know, the, uh, um, the, co the confidence of the Chinese government in trying to protect the, the copyrights in this, um, uh, in this uh, growing region. So the protection of copyrights uh, you know, should like be regarded as a common stakes yeah, for like all the major economic players. I would like to add, to, to add a comment of what just has been said. Uh, I, I wouldn't agree. I don't think that uh, China has been too slow. I think she has been remarkably, uh, she did remarkably well in such short uh, among, uh, uh, amount of time. I mean, I remember we, we were mentioning uh, the first time I, I came uh, to China to, to play. It was like playing on the moon. <laughs> it was such totally, it was a totally different world, as you know, being And being you look like an E.T. Uh, <laughs> that's right, movie, exactly. Right? My, uh, yeah. <laughs> you were from Mars. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> uh, on, on, both, on both sides, we were, we were considered as aliens on both sides. So, you know, when you see how remar remarkable 
you, 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 you achieve so many things in so many sectors in such a short period of time. I think that the notion of copyrights, to tell you the truth, is going much faster in terms of the understanding of the concept in China than in a lot of other countries historically in the past. So I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I, I'm very optimistic about, about the fact that China will get the picture for also another reason. Because Chinese, the Chinese artistic scene needs absolutely to, to uh, uh, come on board because, because if they want to be international. And when you see that uh, uh, the, the, the art market, the, the fine art market, is the number two, the second one in, in the world, mm -hmm. it means that Chinese artists have so much to bring to the world. Let me read the last question, gentlemen, and uh, Madame okay. Yu. Uh, during the course of 2013, China's online video market began to emerge as a viable new distribution channel for Hollywood content producers. That raises yet another issue. That's the rise of the Internet threatens to utterly change our traditional concepts about uh, how to use the uh, cultural products, uh, creative works. Now, uh, Olivier Echel, how shall we deal with the uh, monster of the Internet? in terms of uh, protecting the copyrights? If we do not take the right measures, it will be a monster. If we do take the right, right measures, it is already a monster of opportunities for creators. It is very important to realize that uh, from a CISAC perspective, we have, we have nothing against online business, quite at the contrary. Although it represents small sources of revenue right now for creators, it is booming and developing quite rapidly. But what we need to make sure of is that we are developing from a business perspective a proper relationship that with those that make a lot of money using creations and creative industries and that a fair remuneration be given to the creators. Why? you guys decided to uh, relocate the regional office uh, against the backdrop of uh, Chinese government's attempt to uh, revise the uh, copyright law for the third time, to amend the law for the third time. Now, what's your big concern, Olivier, about the latest uh, revision of the law? My biggest concern is to be a little bit technical with regards to audiovisual. And I would like to see that for the fine arts, resale rights, be kept within the new proposal of the law that will, should be implemented next year. Thank you very much for being with us. With that, we come to the end of this very enlightening edition of Dialogue about how to protect copyrights from international <laughs> illnesses. Thank you for being with us. Until then, goodbye.